Every retreat has something special, something uniquely magical, but how many can lay claim to their own private falls? This is what makes the cottage so special. I mean, I have my own waterfall. For others, the ultimate getaway lies in the beauty of extremes. This Los Angeles-based couple found that here, in Canada's majestic Rocky Mountains. First time Corinne brought me here, I mean, just love the mountains. It just blew my mind. And other times, paradise is just about having a little peace and quiet and a place to hang your canoe. This uh, canoe was built in 1890, and it's museum quality. Simple things just make me happy. It's kind of like a little kid. <laughs> My name is Kara, and this is my retreat. As a real estate agent, Kara Reed knows a good find when she sees one. When this unique property, complete with its own waterfall, came on the market, she put in an offer immediately. I originally bought this property 11 years ago with my ex-husband. We still continue to share it and have very amicably, and it's worked out wonderfully. Kara loves her retreat and uses it to unwind from the high energy pace of her city life. Coming up here, which is about two hours north of the city, is my little escape from the rat race. I'm a total workaholic, and it's just go, go, go in the city and an active social life. And when I come up here, everything just takes a chill down. My blood pressure goes down, my cell phone becomes secondary, and you can see why. I mean, it's like it's adding years to my life being up here. So this is our back deck and we get morning sun out here. It faces southeast and it's the perfect place to come to hear the waterfall in the morning. Uh, and it's beautiful here in the afternoon too. It's like our living room outside. It's our outdoor living area. This is what makes the cottage so special. I mean, I have my own waterfall. Having the sound of the waterfall all the time is somewhat therapeutic. It's just this constant, wonderful sound. It kind of blocks everything else out. It's hard not to love that sound. But to keep it, Kara has had to contend with some unwanted intruders. One summer, the beavers decided to build a beaver dam and block it. So rubber boots and all, we went up and, and got rid of them. It took, it took a long time. Those little buggers can build a dam. So you constantly hear the rushing of the water here, and it's beautiful. But what you'll see when we go to the other side of the cottage, you can't hear the falls at all. So this side of the cottage is faces the lake, and it's our outdoor dining area. This is where we tend to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we're in a little bay, which is so nice, because we don't get any of the big boats, skiers, wakeboarders. They all sort of stay out in the lake. We get the odd kayaker. So this is about as busy as it gets right here. It is two completely different views from the falls to the lake. So now down on the dock. So from this angle of the cottage, we have yet a whole other view. So there's another fire pit here, and this is a great place to sit again in the morning or at night, and you get a better view of the cottage down here. The lake is so small, there's only 25 cottages on it, and we can't even really see a neighbor here. And so there's just this certain seclusion that is so lovely when you come from the rat race of the city. So welcome to the inside of my retreat. As you'll see, it's very small and open concept, and everything is housed right here in this little 800 square foot area. So I love that it's so open and the vaulted ceilings. I mean, this is what makes it feel bigger than it is, and you'll see that all the wraparound decks are from this side. And uh, this is pretty much it. <laughs> now we, you know, we have to keep everything really open here because it's limited space and everything has a space. So I have a fully functional kitchen here because I love to cook. You know, it's just, it's very simple. It's very rustic, it's very compact, but I can throw some wicked dinner parties from here. 
I love to entertain up here and have company, so when I'm up here, it's my retreat, but I just love sharing this with, with other friends and family. Of course, cottage life is not cottage life without, you know, the morning Caesars, which go into the afternoon gin and tonics, which then go to the uh, champagne before dinner, so. Yeah, it's, but yet, you know, you can drink all day up here and you just never get tipsy. I don't know why that is. Welcome to the world's smallest bathroom, a typical cottage bathroom, which has the world's smallest clawfoot tub. It is the smallest one we could find and it barely fit in. And as you'll see, we have like one inch on either side for this tub to fit. So the first bedroom, it has four bunk beds and every single one of the three bedrooms looked like this when we bought the cottage. There were literally 12 single beds in this cottage. It's great for when kids come over, it's sort of a storage area for us and uh, it's got little desks and, and, and all three bedrooms are exactly the same size. But for Kara's room, bunk beds just wouldn't cut it. So this bedroom faces the lake, it's got a great uh, window we put in view of the lake. This did house four bunk beds in it and we've opened it up and painted it white and it's very cottagey and rustic -y in here. It's so important for me to spend time up here just for my own summer holidays and I try and get up as much as I can and just with my job I can often come up during the weekday and not during the weekend. And, you know, I would say I spend five to six weeks here uh, over the course of the year, uh, which are the most cherished. I love to have my solitude up here, there's no question. I, I need it. However, it's always better when there's, there's people to enjoy it, and whether it's the campfire or just on the dock or cooking. I feed the chipmunks every morning, I put nuts out for them. I feel so fortunate to have this place, and I, I just can't ever imagine being without it. From lakeshore to mountainside, this couple's retreat has the luxury chalet look down pat. I used silk sheets and cashmere blankets, and um, so you get the best night's sleep ever. There's nothing better than rolling over and waking up to this. I'm Corinne. And I'm Fred. And this is our retreat. There are luxury mountain retreats, and then there is this. Welcome to Chateau Corbin, where rustic charm mingles with old world sophistication to create a truly one-of-a-kind weekend getaway. This retreat is located close to the picturesque town of Canmore, nestled amongst the world-renowned Rocky Mountains in Alberta, Canada. Corinne Corbin and her husband, Dr. Frederick Corbin, live and work in Los Angeles, but for the Canadian-born Corinne, it was important to have a place that was close to her family, which is why they chose here. You know, I came from a lower middle class family and we were so fortunate if we got to come here for the summer. This was like a big deal. Oh, we're going to the mountains. And, and I wanted to really share that with my husband. I ski and I fly fish. And obviously I'm not doing that in New York City. First time Corinne brought me here, I mean, just love the mountains. And I fell in love with the town. I love Canmore. We went out for a, a nice dinner. Over dinner, Fred and I discussed it. We came, talked to a realtor. And I'd say it was probably, what, 10 minutes before we purchased the land. So they may have bought the property in 10 minutes, but it took Corinne five years to plan the design and decor of the home. I have a six car garage back in Southern California. And I started collecting furniture from Europe, from Aspen, from San Francisco, from all over the world. I started collecting pieces. She came up a Christmas when we moved into the house before I did to basically set the house up and then I came up two weeks later and it literally looked just like this. It just blew my mind. I took a little bit of Fred's taste which is casual and rustic and I incorporated it with my taste which is a little bit more formal and elegant and it was really important for me to have him come down here and feel really proud of, of what we'd done together. And so she should, because the interior of this retreat is the real star of this story. So basically this is the entrance to the Chateau Corbin. I wanted it to be very welcoming and I wanted it to also have a, its own character. I wanted it to look like it's the oldest house on the block. I chose to do very rustic stone, unlike anything else in the neighborhood, so that it gave it a little bit more character. It's interesting, my husband's Jewish, but uh, <laughs> the entryway to our house is two reclaimed church doors. <laughs> Shalom. Okay, come on in. Let me show you the inside of the Chateau Corbin. 
So once you enter into our retreat, you'll notice the amazing views, and that's one of the things that attracted us to this area. That's why this house is here in the first place. I've got a Douglas fir that my Swiss woodworker picked out. It's from British Columbia, and it spans the entire three floors of the house. It's a 400-year-old Douglas fir. And that's just one example of Corinne's design vision at work in this impressive retreat. Other than the amazing view, this chandelier is one of the focal pieces of this room. You don't actually realize how big it is, but it's taller than I am. And uh, it's one of the few pieces that I couldn't fit into the house. I had to remove the dining room window, hire a special crane to bring this piece in. Her design style is certainly eclectic, and this room is no exception. So basically this room is what we refer to as the grand room. And I wanted something that was both warm, cozy, elegant, comfortable. This sofa is a 1970 pace sofa, so um, I wanted to make it kind of unique and in the winter months, very cozy, so I recovered it in this faux chinchilla and it works. Anyway, now moving right along, I've got this rare free form redwood coffee table. It's from the 60s and I bought that in San Francisco and I paired that with uh, some 19th century French chairs to try and tie everything in. To add to the mix, Corinne has peppered the house with museum quality Plains Indians artifacts and artwork. The Plains Indians played a great role in the history of this area, so I felt that it was really important to incorporate that history into the house. And hang on, there's still two more floors to see. Welcome to my master suite. <laughs> this is the lower level, the party level. What happens in our retreat stays in our retreat. Dr. Fred and Corinne Corbin's Luxury Mountain Retreat was designed with rustic elegance in mind. You know, for me, because of family and friends, one of the most important parts of the house is the table. It's enjoying meals together, it's enjoying great wine, it's cooking together, it's spending time in the kitchen. And one of the things that I took into consideration when I did this kitchen is I wanted to be able to work here as well as play and be a part of the whole party. Basically, this is my design and my way of enjoying cooking and working in the kitchen and being a part of the party. And when it's time for the party to leave the kitchen, the lower level is where it's at. This is the lower level of the chateau and um, the most important part about this is that this is where the guests hang out. I happened to be dropping some things off at the Salvation Army store and I found this sofa for 300 bucks. Yay, score! Um, so I paired that with a $20,000 hunting cabinet and uh, it works, right? Sure, why not? We've also got an outdoor hot tub. And so it's kind of anything goes down here. This is the lower level, the party level. What happens in our retreat stays in our retreat. And this is one of my guest bedrooms. I designed this bedroom with comfort in mind, but I just wanted to create something that made my guests feel at home but it also made them feel like comfortable and special, like they're on a special vacation, almost like a honeymoon suite. The other guest rooms include a cozy bunk that sleeps four, a decadent cowboy themed room complete with a fur throw, and luxurious ensuite bathrooms. Life is good at Chateau Corbin. Ah, I don't get this in LA. Because of the spectacular location of our retreat, I wanted to try and utilize as much outdoor space as I could so that we could spend time enjoying the views, the sounds, just nature, just feeling like we were one with what's going on out here. So I collected these pieces from San Francisco. The artwork um, is solid bronze. I took five guys to bring that up there and um, I like to accessorize outside as well as inside. I feel that it gives it a more homey, more interesting feel. This is amazing. This is why we came here, being one with the mountains, the air. It's intoxicating, and you don't need to be doing anything except just enjoying. But it's Corinne and Fred's master on the top floor that really steals the show. Welcome to my master suite. <laughs> Once again, this room is a mix of rustic, formal, and oh-so-French, with little expense spared in the name of comfort. I love to use silk, so I used silk sheets and cashmere blankets, and um, so you get the best night's sleep ever. And this is my master bath retreat. And what a retreat it is. Gold-plated faucets, marble flooring, and a massive soaker tub. But it doesn't stop there. To keep my husband happy, I have installed a steam shower. 
complete with Cheryl Wagner gold fixtures. And if I could show you a little secret, and I designed my husband his very own water closet. Ta-da, the key to my successful marriage. Ah, and wouldn't you know, the toilet seat is up. So that's one thing we don't have to fight about today. And for me, on the other hand, um, I designed my potty with comfort in mind, but also I got the view. The reality is the view out of every window of this house is spectacular. There's nothing better than rolling over and waking up to this. You know, some people say that silence is deafening, but this silence to me is like music to my ears. It's just so relaxing, it's so wonderful. When I look at the mountains, I feel safe, I feel relaxed. I feel like I'm at home. And there's never a moment that I come here that I take that view for granted. Every time I come here, it's like I've been here for the first time. I'm looking at the mountains, it's, it's like it's amazing. Almost brings tears to my eyes. One of my favorite reasons for being up here is just having a moment to reflect and, you know, just to enjoy. To me, just coming up here, Corinne says taking a deep breath. It's a place to relax, but you take a deep breath and it's fresh air. And it's crisp, fresh air. And, you know, you just love it for that. This couple spent two years renovating their dream retreat from the ground up. It's still not there yet. It's still a lot of um, work to be done. And you might be surprised who wears the tool belt in this relationship. He's definitely more handy. I'm surprised, yeah. I'm Diego. And I'm John. And this, this is, is our, our retreat. retreat. Monday to Friday, these city boys thrive in the fast-paced world of fashion, hair, and makeup. They love their work, but also love their downtime. So, as soon as the week is over, they grab their dogs, some supplies, and head here to their quiet and private piece of lakeside paradise. I grew up in Brazil. I grew up in a big city. So you, you, get, you get tired of it. And when I have a little break, like we do every weekend, it's, it's nice. Yeah, I definitely need this after our, our, long, our long week. We live hectic lives, and up here, we can just step back and just get a total escapism. Oh my God, look at this day, stunning, it's beautiful. This cottage is water access only. So after a short boat ride, John and Diego, along with their dogs, Wilno and Bentley, are ready to relax. As soon as we get to the dock, it's a sense of relief, de-stress, and then it's also, we feel like we're being recharged in a way. For them, this is the perfect place because it's quiet, serene, no boats, and hardly any neighbors. And the cottage is tucked up high on a hill, making their retreat even more private. John and Diego bought this cottage three years ago as a way to unwind and have been slowly turning it into their ideal weekend retreat. I believe the cottage is about 30 years old. The cottage looks completely different from when we first got it. Yeah, it, it was just a, a, a cabin, basically. It's still not there yet. It's still a lot of uh, work to be done. So, who's the handyman in this relationship? He's definitely more handy. I'm surprised, yeah. Just because he has big muscles, that doesn't mean he's a handyman, you know. <laughs> he's kind of like a little kid. <laughs> and welcome to our cottage. It's open concept. It's a three bedroom, one floor. So it's not that big, but it's, it's very uh, simple, modest. It, it, uh, it's ideal because it highlights my collection. John is a proud Canadian, very in touch with his heritage. His cottage is more like a museum of Canadiana, including these authentic totem poles. I have a few totem poles. They bring a sense of peace to the surroundings. Um, they're very spiritual, so and it, it's just it's very peaceful. To add to the collection, this antique cupboard from the 1860s, native masks from a local artist, this chandelier made out of antlers, and... And above me is a canoe, which is an antique collector's piece. This is um, a birch bark canoe. This uh, canoe was built in 1890, and it was, uh, it was used by an, an Indian trail guide in a park. I bought it at auction, and it's museum quality. Simple things just 
make me happy. It's clear John has a passion for these items, but does Diego share the interest? He's very passionate about it, he, and he knows a lot about his art, Katie and all of that. Um, I don't. He educates me sometimes when I have the patience to listen, but uh, um, yeah, to a certain point, I like it. The personal touches continue into the bedroom, and John's patriotic taste in art shines here as well. This is a collection of some of my art and pieces of folk art. This, this um, art represents um, very much the landscape up here, and I, I feel like it fits in perfectly in this place. And the best part about this is this view. Nothing beats it. And this is why, why, why we come up here. With our job, we talk a lot. We're talking with people, clients all the time. It's nonstop. So when oh, we come up here, we don't have to do that. We don't have to talk to anybody. We don't have to do anything. Sometimes we don't even talk to each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we just sit and drink and look out. Because to us, nothing beats this. It's just beautiful. It's our own little piece of heaven for us. The way we decorate it, the totem poles, everything. We love the serenity of the place. In the summer, we're up here uh, any given opportunity, every weekend. The moment I drive down the road, I just, I totally unwind. Everything just slows down and it's amazing. I love it here. This is my, this is my, um, I'm passionate about this place. We love this retreat because it's our escape. Everything is in here, like our peace of mind. Uh, it's recharging, it recharges us. Um, it's, it's peaceful, it's, it's spiritual, it's, it brings us closer, it brings us together when we're up here. I wish I could move up here and just live up here full time. <laughs>